the father looks down on the earth knowing everything that he can do and all that he can produce. And he just looked for somebody that will partner with him. He looks for somebody that will trust his hand, that will trust his genius because he's rich. Everything was made by the Lord, even the idea of money. He made the idea of money because whenever somebody would do something that he said, they would discover money. He made the invention of money. Money wasn't set into being because man sinned against God and then there was a money system all of a sudden. No, he created money because he wanted to show man how obeying his voice pays off. So God created a payment plan before sin, before the fall in the garden. Her villa was made a place that was full of gold. God made that place before Adam ever sinned. He made a place that was saturated with financial decoration. He made a place in heaven. He made locations, geographies, and cities in heaven. He made mansions, he made places where people could enjoy and have pleasure because he's rich. Why do people fear when they're serving a rich God? It is because they don't know that God is rich. Did you know that if you ever find yourself stressed out provisionally, it's because you don't know God is rich. Did you know that if you got problem with taxes, did you know that God doesn't not know that you got problem with taxes? Did you know that he got money to deal with the taxes? Everything in life where there is a financial demand on you, God is aware of that a million years before it comes to your knowledge. For you, you might be thinking that you're going forward. But in the spirit world, you go backwards because God already been in every situation that you're about to get into. The Lord is already are occupying the place of your house. He's already there. He's occupying the place of your vehicles. He's already there. He occupies the places of your clothes. I know what it means to be sowing seed and not buying clothes, not buying shoes. I know what it means to have a low amount of materialistic things in a time of sowing. When due season comes, God takes you shopping and he buys everything that you want and desire, name, brand, high-end, things that you dreamed about, you saw other people have. You didn't get jealous of them, but you said that looked nice. That's what God gives to you in the harvest. Everything that's good and perfect on the earth, everything that's enjoyable, God made it for his sons and his daughters. He made it for you. The Bible says, if evil men know how to give good gifts to their children, how much the Father in heaven know how to give good gifts to those that ask him. How much will he give them the Holy Ghost? How much would he give them all other things? The father is not a stubborn dad. He's not a tough dad. He loves pleasure and he loves giving pleasure. He made you for his perfect pleasure and he made you to enjoy pleasures as you walk in his perfect pleasure. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. That means that he's not stubborn. Generosity is freedom in giving big. And that's who God is. He's generous. He is free 
in giving big. The Lord don't have long periods to give somebody a harvest. What makes the harvest take a long time to get to a person is because they're distracted by their flesh. They're distracted by pleasing their own bodies. That's what makes the harvest take a long time. The minute you become dedicated to spirit-led activity and you make an effort, to acknowledge God in all your ways and you make an effort to seek out his voice and you make an effort to show him praise and gratitude. All other things are added unto you. The Lord don't like you waiting for money. The Lord don't like nobody waiting for wealth for a long extended time. He likes you waiting, but not for an extended time. There are some extensions on the harvest because people faint here and there and God have mercy on them. God say, okay, I'm going to act like I ain't see that. That's what the word of God said that he don't remember your sins. God, God say, I'm going to act like I ain't see that. I'm going to act like I ain't see you just, 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 just disrespect me. I'm going to act like I ain't see you. I'm going to give you a chance here. I'm going to give you a chance here. I'm going to give you a chance here. The Lord watches how everybody deals with money. When somebody deals with money correctly, the father is enabled to execute all financial favor and all financial miracles in that person's life. He's able to restore them and give them abundance because they're handling the finances correctly. Then we go to handling your mind. After you are following God's financial wisdom, now you have to follow his mental wisdom. Mental wisdom is an adversary to weariness. Mental wisdom is an enemy to fatigue. Wise people don't get tired. When it comes to doing divine decisions, in their relationships, in their city, in their self-control, they don't get tired. Wisdom is the energizer battery from the Holy Ghost to keep on doing good things. Wisdom is a divine jolt of energy given to you by God to succeed in righteousness. Wisdom is mental vitality. The wiser you are, the stronger you are. What Psalm 24 says, a wise man is strong. I think that's verse five. A wise man is strong. Yeah, a man of understanding is of, he increases strength. Wisdom will never be detached from wealth. They are joint twins. You can't have wisdom without wealth. You can't have wisdom without wealth. They walk side and side by each other. So when somebody is operating in wisdom, they are actually doing things that prevent Satan's will to steal from them. When somebody walks in wisdom, they are stopping the authority of Satan from being resurrected. When somebody walks in wisdom, demons' voice start becoming scattered on the radar. The signals start messing up. They can't connect with your soul when you have wisdom. Wisdom don't let evil connect with your soul. When Solomon asked God for wisdom, God told him, I'm going to give you wealth and riches because wisdom is money cometh in disguise. When somebody operates in wisdom, they are telling God, 
I allow you to make me rich. I allow you to make me wealthy. I allow you to give me the place you want me to live in. I allow you to give me the vehicles you want me to have. I allow you to give me the clothes you want me to wear. I allow you to give me the pleasure you want me to experience. Solomon didn't pray for sex. But when he asked for wisdom, God had Solomon's sex life in there. Sex is a reward for wisdom. So if you are wise, you wouldn't let yourself submit to horniness and do something before time. Because wisdom has sex hidden in it. That's why fools love sex. Because they wasn't authorized to have it. Sex thieves. Sex thieves. Solomon, they asked God for money. But when he asked for wisdom, wisdom is money cometh in disguise. Solomon asked God, make me pleasurable to you. That's when he asked for wisdom. He's saying, make me be a good experience. I want to satisfy your eyes. I want you to look at me and be impressed. And God said, I'm going to give you rich. I'm going to give you riches. I'm going to give you wealth. So when somebody wants to appease the eye of God, they want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. All your money is making, in a, making a decision to live sacrificially, to pitch yourself last and always pit the Holy Ghost first. When the Holy Ghost is able to take over your body, even when you're tired physically, you won't go to sleep. Even when you want to eat and the Holy Spirit wants you to do something else and it's going to take up that time, you can't eat right there because you got to do that. When you want to shop and the Holy Ghost saying, do this for me. When, whenever you live sacrificially, money coming. Sacrificial living yields the wealth anointing in intensity. Sacrificial living yields the wealth anointing in intensity. A strong financial anointing rests on those that make sacrifices. A sacrifice is where you combat against your emotions to produce the fruit of the Spirit. A sacrifice is when you win the war in your mind. A sacrifice is where you overcome your urges, your carnality. Your bitterness. Sacrifice is where you overcome jealousy. Sacrifice is where you overcome selfishness. Sacrifice is the inability to rob God of what he expected. You give God his expectation when you live sacrificially. You live impressive to God when you live sacrificially. When you sacrifice yourself, God will always exalt you and he'll put you in a place of worship. You know what that means? He gonna cause the earth to worship you with good news, good experiences. He gonna make her cause your life to be a heavenly experience. All through sacrifice. Sacrifice is a divine place of recognizing that you don't own yourself You've been owned by the Lord of hosts, the King of Kings, the King of glory. And as he can rule you, he going to let you be a ruler over much.